So after discussing depression and the antidepressant drugs, now we go on to discuss anxiety. Anxiety means worry. It's a disproportionate worry. It's an unpleasant emotional state associated with tension, apprehension, uneasiness, discomfort and fear. There is sympathetic activation due to anxiety leading to tachycardia, palpitation, tremor, increased GI motility, trembling, sweating. When there is mild anxiety, it's quite common and there is no drug treatment required for mild anxiety. But when it becomes severe, it becomes chronic, it becomes debilitating type of anxiety, we need to treat it with anti-anxiety agents or which are also called as anxiolytics or minor tranquilizers. Along with this, we need to give behavioral or psychotherapy if required. There are some important associations of anxiety as far as mood is concerned. There could be fear, panic, dysphoria. Limited thought abnormality might exist in the form of obsessions, irrational fears and, and phobia. There may be behavioral associations of anxiety like avoidance behavior, following rituals and compulsions. And there could be pseudo-neurological or hysterical convergence signs. And the patient might go on to fix the ideas on imagined or exaggerated physical symptoms. The anti-anxiety agents or anxiolytics are classified as the first group, a very important new group, is called azapirones. And this contains buspirone, jepirone and ispapirone. And they are used for mild to moderate type of anxiety as well as for chronic GAD it's written on the slide, Generalized Anxiety Disorder. Azapirons are distinctly different from all other drugs because they act on the 5-HT1A receptor and they are partial agonists at 5-HT1A receptors. The next group is benzodiazepines, of course, includes diazepam, chlorodiazepoxide, oxazepam. There are drugs like lorazepam, alprazolam and clonazepam which can be used in acute states or for severe anxiety or the anxieties associated with panic or phobia. Next, I hope you remember, most important drugs to treat anxiety are the selective serotonin reoptic inhibitors, SSRI. And they are useful in anxiety states like OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, phobia, panic states, as well as generalized anxiety disorder. Next. Beta blockers are extremely useful because they block the manifestations of anxiety, the tachycardia, palpitation, etc. So beta blocker, propranolol, and other anti-anxiety agents include sedative antihistamine like hydroxyzine. Let's talk a few words about buspirone. What's buspirone? It's a partial agonist at 5-HT1A receptor. It has no action on the GABA receptor. I hope you remember GABA A receptor, GABA A receptor, which has the chloride ion channel entry and it could also be called as benzodiazepine receptor. Biospiron, no action on this benzodiazepine or GABA receptor. Action is on 5-HT1A receptor and is partially honest. And it since, doesn't, since it doesn't act on the GABA receptor or benzodiazepine receptor, it creates a great difference as far as biospiron is concerned from the other anti-anxiety drugs is there is minimal sedation and cognitive psychomotor impairment and there is no tolerance, dependence or abuse potential. So that's great about buspirone that sedation will be minimal and the tolerance, dependence and the abuse potential will be minimal. So it will be easy to stop this drug after using it for a certain period of time. There is no additive toxicity obviously with the central nervous system depressants because this is not producing great amount of CNS depression and it doesn't have anticonvulsant or muscle relaxant effect. So there are some four special important points about buspirone. It's got a slow onset of action. It's not a rapidly acting drug and the onset of action is about two weeks and we could use it for mild to moderate as well as the chronic generalized anxiety disorder. It's not much useful in the acute states, panic attacks or for OCDs. So that's buspirone. So when you think of anxiety, think of buspirone first, no addiction potential, no abuse potential and minimal sedation. Buspirone has got slow onset of action as we said and some important symptoms as far as adverse effects are concerned could be nausea, headache, dizziness or sense of nervousness 
and lightheadedness, sometimes decreased concentration, and if it's used in larger doses, then it could lead to some drowsiness. It could also decrease the body temperature, so hypothermia, and it can increase the prolactin secretion and the growth hormone secretion. But in general, the sense of fatigue which happens with benzodiazepines, with buspiron, the sense of fatigue is very less as compared to the benzodiazepines. Now we go on to discuss the second group, that's the benzodiazepines. They have got more selective anti-anxiety action and independent selective anti-anxiety action on the limbic system, independent of the general CNS depression. So it's not just because they are depressing your CNS and you are becoming sedated and that's why it's anti-anxiety effect. No, it's a special independent selective anti-anxiety effect. And there's minimal CBS RS depression when you use them in a small dose. That's the anti-anxiety dose. We already said about the drugs. Lorazepam, diazepam and clonazepam can be used by parenteral routes of administration, intramuscular intravenous, for acute anxiety, for acute psychotic states and for manic episodes. Benzodiazepines are useful for various disorders. It includes panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety, performance anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as obsessive compulsive disorder and specific phobias. There's a very important role of benzodiazepines when the anxiety is accompanying depression, schizophrenia, acute psychosis or mania. Nextly, when the patient is withdrawing from the drugs, drug withdrawal states, benzodiazepines are extremely useful. They are useful for anxieties associated with other systemic illnesses like hypertension, thyrotoxicosis, angina, peptic ulcer, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome and gastroesophageal reflux disease. 